Hello everyone and welcome to yet another day in this The Clown Decade. The decade where things are only going to get worse before they get better. And today we are going to be talking about the rather large scandal in Labour at the moment. Not large in terms of pure money that is being talked about here, that number is actually quite small. It's more about the principle of the damn thing. And so to get everyone up to speed, because I don't know about you, I've not been following politics too much recently because it is also boring at the moment because we all know where it's going to lead to effectively a Labour landslide. But anyway, according to Sky News, Angela Rayner's tax affairs, a smear or a real trust problem for Labour. Labour's deputy leader has branded the story a stream of smears, but the Conservatives will be keeping the pressure on to reveal more details and Labour will have to decide whether to bow to that pressure. And again, this whole tax affair, it's all about £1,500 of capital gains tax, whether it should have been paid or not. And either way, Angela Rayner didn't pay that tax. And the thing is, this has become quite a important point of principle for basically everyone apart from Labour activists. Because Angela Rayner, for some reason, is one of the most liked politicians at the moment. From what I can tell and from everyone I ask about Angela Rayner, People basically only like her because she has a northern working class accent and is in parliament. Whenever I ask people what they actually like about what she said, effectively it comes down to nothing more than, oh, she puts pressure on the Tories, doesn't she? Which, I mean, I guess, but that's only because the media are the ones more putting pressure on the Tories by actually finding where they've got non-dom status, where they're avoiding tax legally where they're, as for some reason they always phrase it this way, their mate are getting private contracts or what have you. Effectively, Angela Rayner parrots media stories about government corruption, whether they are actually stories of government corruption or not. doesn't really matter. If it's in the news, Angela Rayner just parrots it. She is effectively a glorified working-class northern parrot. And if that's what people want in Parliament, then it's kind of no wonder we're in the situation we're in at the moment, and it's no wonder the clown decade's only going to get worse. But anyway, let's see what she is in trouble for. Angela Rayner brought a council house in Vicarage Road, Stockport, under right to buy for £79,000 in 2007 and sold it in March 2015, shortly before she became an MP, for £127,500. And... The right to buy is yet another thing that seems to be the left's bugbear at the moment. I've seen so many people say we're in a housing crisis because of right to buy. And again, it is kind of what is radicalising me into saying, if you are this uninformed on politics, why should you be able to have a voice in it? Why should you be able to vote if you say something that is so monumentally stupid? Because whether those houses are owned by councils or by private people, who, by the way, most of the time, it's working class people that actually want to buy the house, hence they buy it, then the housing stock is still the same. It's not going to affect house prices in any way. Those people that own the house will still have a discount on rent. It, it doesn't change anything, but anyway. In 2010, she married Mark Rayner, and they had two children. If she moved into his house a mile away in Lowndes Lane, which neighbours say she did, and her own tweets have described it as her home, then Vicarage Road was no longer her main residence and she should have paid tax on her 48,500 capital gain. And again, that equates to simply one paying 1,500 in tax. I'm not being funny, but if after tax you're still making 46,000 pounds, this is nothing short of petty. And the thing with capital gains tax is it, you actually have to yourself let HMRC know if you made any capital gains over 6,000. For instance, recently I had to look into this because I sold a rather valuable skin on Counter-Strike for quite a lot of money. And I had to check if it beat the threshold for capital gains or not. It turns out it didn't, but if it did, I would have let them know and paid whatever tax I'd have to pay on it. Because even though I hate tax and I think the idea of a capital gains tax is stupid, given that sales are already taxed thanks to VAT, dems the rules and dems the rules I gotta live with. And apparently Angela Rayner, in this case, assuming this is all true and it's not just smears, which I really don't think it is, then my god does she look like a complete idiot for constantly hounding the Tory party and its MPs for all its business in, well, whatever the media says it's done with tax. And I, there's no doubt in my mind that there has been tax avoidance, but as we will go through, 
really an awful loss if it isn't actually illegal, which is the difference here. Reyna, however, insists she was not liable for it. Okay. I, again, this is dependent on whether that was actually her main residence or not, which, again, according to the neighbours and her social media, she wasn't. But according to other sources, the police haven't even investigated or taken notes from said neighbours. So, you know, this is why the Daily Mail are going so hard on this, because it appears that the police are being very selective with whom they investigate on this job, which is quite surprising, to be honest, because this comes under Greater Manchester Police and they've made vast improvements recently, so I'd be surprised if they don't actually eventually look into this properly. Anyway, she insists she was not liable for the tax, uh, as she had taken tax advice, which backs that up. Keir Starmer on Monday morning said his team, but not him, had seen that advice, which has not been made public, which raises quite a lot of questions. Why is Keir Starmer not seeing the advice but his team have? Okay, I guess that he will just be given the summary by his team. But also then, why has it not been made public? Again, this is the party and the particular person who goes on constantly about <laughs> the tax situation of an awful lot of Tory MPs and actually demands that they publish their tax advice and things like that. So not having your tax advice published? Yeah, seems a little odd. Let's be clear, if she did owe tax, the amount she was liable for is not in the big leagues. With estate agent fees and other exemptions, tax experts estimate it could just be £1,500. Again, this is a big kind of defence of Angela Rayner, apparently. Yeah, she may have done something illegal, but it was only for £1,500, which I'm not being funny. If I could save £1,500, I'd be absolutely loving life at the moment. That That is actually quite a lot of money to some people, and especially to working class people who the Labour Party is supposed to be representing. You know, that's a month's wage for an awful lot of people. As Ray McCann, press president of Chartered Institute of Taxation, told me today, it could be nothing if, for example, she improved her home by putting in a new kitchen. We don't have the full details. Well, this is why people are asking for the full details. Yes, it could be perfectly reasonable that she didn't pay tax. This is why we would like to see the tax advice. But it hasn't been published. And that raises quite a few questions. Ms. Reyna has said she lived in her own home the whole time and that she had an older child from a previous relationship that she had at 16. But yes, this is apparently incorrect, again, from her own social media posts because she's an idiot and also from testimony from her neighbours, which hasn't been investigated by police properly yet. Every family is different, but it worked for us, she said. She called the claims, which surfaced in a biography of her by former Tory donor Lord Ashcroft, called the Red Queen, a stream of smears from the usual suspects. If they came from your own biography? <laughs> How is it a smear? Tax advisor Mr McCann said, I don't think there is any credible case to be made that she's deliberately evaded tax. I don't see that as likely. I, again, it, whether it is intended or not doesn't matter. The point is, is that if you're constantly going on about other people's tax situation, you need to be whiter than white with your own. And again, the difference is, is that an awful lot of the time, she's complaining about legal things that, yes, Labour sure, they will change when they're in office, like the non-dom status and things like that. But this is actually something illegal that Labour will keep illegal. Mr McCann carries on. Worst case scenario is that she didn't realise it. She wasn't Angela Rayner, Deputy Leader of the Labour Party. She was a care worker. These rules are very complicated. Okay. I, I, get, I don't even think... I've even thought about ever getting a tax advisor. The, the most I do is ask my accountant friends and brother what I do about, you know, capital gains tax or something like that. I, but Angela Rayner actually sought tax advice uh, from a professional. And if those professionals screwed up, and yes, I'm actually on side of, I don't think Angela Rayner meant to evade tax like this. However, the fact that she is hiding it so much and not publishing the tax advice and things like that, does raise a few questions and starts get, getting me to lean over to, oh, maybe this was actually a really cynical move by her. I'm not sure, because she is certainly being cynical at the moment because of all the sycophants online that are defending her. But the thing is, even if it turns out she is wrong, she could easily just put out all these fires by, <laughs> by saying that, well, okay, in the first four years, you can remedy the issue with HMRC within four years, but obviously we're way past that now. We're, you know, this was nine, 10 years ago. However, even if it does turn out she owes tax, she can literally just pay it anyway, if it turns out to all be wrong. 
Uh, and if she does that, the courts will probably go easy on her if it turns out she did break the law, whether accidentally or on purpose. So, again, Labour seems to be putting an awful lot of political capital into not having to deal with Angela Rayner. I suppose that's the biggest thing. If Angela Rayner is found to have broken the law here, well, a lot of people are going to be calling for Labour to treat their own as they want the Tories to treat their own, in that if someone has broken the law, especially a tax law, then they need to get out of there. But Angela Rayner is genuinely a popular politician, which I don't think is at all justified, but, hey, it's universal suffrage and <laughs> the people are outworded. So they absolutely love a working class woman with a bit of attitude, which is all Angela Rayner is. It's all she can give to the Labour Party, and apparently it's what gets her nearly £90,000 a year. So, great. That, that That's where we're at at the moment. A woman might have broken a tax law. It's not a very large amount of money. The Labour Party seems to be trying to cover up and not publish the tax advice she got for some reason. And even there, they are—they seemingly are trying to carry on with this. Whether it's a lie or not is well, <laughs> more information needs to come out about it. But this this seemingly false story that she was at her old council home that she bought with the right to buy scheme that they don't agree with anyway, as her main point of residency. When neighbours on her own social media posts apparently say otherwise, this is something that needs to be investigated because. Labour do appear to be lying about this, and what is their main defence? Oh, it's just smears, oh, aren't the Tories worse? And again, we'll, we'll get into that properly, but first let's finish this off. There is a separate question of whether she breached electoral law by being registered at Vicarage Road when she didn't live there, which Great Manchester Police is looking at for a second time after Conservatives raised concerns. So, as I say, this is an ongoing investigation, so... Whether they find something or not, I guess it's up for time to tell. The Mail newspapers, which serialised the Lord Ashcroft book, are pursuing the story, publishing a letter today from the Conservative chairman Richard Holden with a list of unanswered questions. And yes, we are going to have a quick look at that. And just quickly looking at the first five, you can see the rest in the description. They are very reasonable questions. Why did Angela Rayner say in a social media post in 2014 that she had just got home to Lowndes Lane if she didn't live there. I mean, this this is one of the stupidest things. Everyone pretty much in the world, well, in the Western world, has been online and posting everything about their life since pretty much 2010. <laughs> so trying to lie about anything, really, in public life between 2010 and the present, it's just stupid. You're never going to get away with it. On her own account of split living, how much time did she spend at each address? Who was with her while she was at Vicarage Road? Is she confident her Vicarage Road electoral roll entry accurately reflects her living arrangement? Why are there no pictures of her at Vicarage Road on her open social media between 2010, when her son were registered at her husband's home, and 2015 when her former council house was sold? Were the neighbours, who repeatedly said she was never in Vicarage Road, lying? What does she have to say to those who say her brother Darren was living at Vicarage Road alone? Did she get rent from her brother? Did she tell her mortgage provider who was in the property? And the rest of the questions are all relatively similar to that. Why are there so many holes in this story that she is propping up? And also, did she commit other types of fraud, such as getting the single person discount on council tax when she was married and saying she was still living alone in another house. Again, as I say, all relatively sensible questions. Uh, and yet, what's the Labour reply? Oh, these are just smears from the Tories to avoid us scrutinising their chaos, say David Lammy. Shadow Foreign Secretary says Deputy Labour leader has party support and has done nothing wrong, despite the fact that we have evidence that she is lying. David Lemmy has discredited questions over whether Angela Rayner owns capital gains tax. Oh, well, that's good of him. As smears being run to distract people from Tory chaos and the rising cost of living before the local elections. Oh, he has discredited them by making another accusation, right? I see. The Shadow Foreign Secretary said Rayner had Labour's full support and that she had done nothing wrong and that her tax arrangements had been subject to advice from accountants and lawyers. As if accountants and lawyers can't do illegal things. Lammy's defence of the deputy Labour leader came after the Mail on Sunday published another story on Rayner's tax affairs, pointing to social media posts in which Rayner referred to her husband's house as home, while saying a council house was her principal residence. Yes, and if she was actually living at her husband's house, 
she has broken the law by not paying her tax. And the electoral register as well, saying that she is residents of Vicarage Road or whatever it was when she was actually at her husband's house. Yeah, no, that's illegal too. That That's very much illegal. So claiming that she's done something wrong while this investigation is ongoing, it's a bold move, I'll say that. But uh, it's the funny thing, isn't it? Late... I, I said in a video recently that Labour effectively already are in power and the election is just a formality at this point, just to see how much they have won. But the thing is, is that th this is this is reflective of how they are going to be in government. A lot of the time, they can just blame the Tories at this point because they've been in power for 14 years and that accusation sticks an awful lot because, well, it, it, frankly, it is true. However, when they are in power, they are still going to be blaming the Tories for everything they they can put in all the economic policy that they want and ruin the economy and they can just say oh this is actually 14 years of tory rule that caused this despite the fact that they also said that liz trust managed to crash the economy in 40 days without actually implementing any policy which is exactly why i think the clown decade is going to get better come the end of the decade come 2029 or 2030 something like that because Labour are going to be a disaster, a total disaster. They, as I think Peter Hitchens is correct, Keir Starmer has this facade of being, you know, a, a new Labour front, and that's because he is new Labour. Because new Labour was Thatcherism on the surface, like putting up a facade of that, and then underneath they were quite radical in reforming the entire country. Again, if you are a frequent watcher of this channel. The detail we go into in, uh, in articles, they always mention things that came about under Tony Blair or Gordon Brown, because that's when we had a revolution in the country, the Supreme Court being an absolute proof point of all this, because that came about in you know, the 2000s or something, after reforms in the House of Lords, and everyone hates the House of Lords now, and nobody seems to like the Supreme Court either, and yet a lot of people are saying, oh no, this is a sacred institution, which it isn't. It's been around for a decade or two, maybe. I can't remember exactly when it came about, but it doesn't really matter. The point is, is that the country completely changed around the 2000s and people liked it at first because revolution always feels quite nice. But now we're living through the revolution and nobody seems to like it. And now the revolution is collapsing and all Labour can do is blame the Tories for that because the Tories were just continuing new Labour light. And now that Labour are going to be in and they're going to carry on blaming the Tories and I don't think that's going to stick. Uh, again, when people tell you who they are, believe them. Labour apparently will play apologia for alleged tax dodgers and make claims that the only reason that people are angry about this is because it's basically <laughs> Tory astroturfing when actually I think I think it is actually quite the opposite. That The Tories aren't really pushing this point too much. It's a couple of MPs that are because they understand that actually this is something that the public care about. But fortunately, this story has garnered so much attention and popularity that even Keir Starmer is being directly asked about the inconsistencies, we will say, of Angela Rayner's story. So here is ITV News interviewing Keir Starmer and actually doing a good job of challenging him on this entire story. So I suppose this is one thing. At least the media are actually pushing against Labour now because, as I say, they are effectively the party in power. Having said that, journalists are still scumbags. Andrew Rain has been asked no end of questions about this. She's answered them all. She said she's very happy to answer any further questions from the police or from any of the um, authorities. Interesting, interesting quick change of frame there. Angela Rayner has already answered a lot of questions and she's happy to answer any more, but only from the authorities. And again, that that's a reasonable thing to do. That That is actually fine. But the problem is, is that I, I suppose a lot of people might be having the suspicion that given that Greater Manchester Police is under the eye of the Greater Manchester Council, which is obviously a Labour Council, people might be asking questions as to, you know, why aren't they investigating the claims from the neighbours that she didn't live there? What information do they actually have access to? I assume they have access to the advice that Angela Rayner was given to avoid paying the 1,500 capital gains tax. But as I say, this is an ongoing investigation, so time will only tell how this investigation goes, but as I say, it all seems very fishy. But it is quite telling as well that the party that is supposed to be about the working people 
isn't particularly answering questions that an awful lot of people have. Because in Labour's mind, the working people, uh, effectively it is people like Angela Rayner, basically only people in unions who are actually activists for unions. That is what Labour think working class people are. When in reality, I... In reality, the activist class of unions are typically paid quite well and are quite comfortably middle class. As uh, people like Angela Rayner are, I mean, she owns property and sold it for a decent amount of money. Uh, money that a lot of people would feel lucky if they saw by the time they're 50. Which is another reason it makes me laugh when people try and make out that Angela Rayner is this working class hero. Effectively, the only reason she's managed to get anywhere in life, I mean, it says she was a care worker, which isn't quite true. She was a care worker for a few years, but really ended up as a trade union representative. And as I say, they're paid a decent amount of money because unions are effectively just political cartels and they end up embezzling a lot of money. I mean, this is why a lot of union leaders end up owning millionaires' homes because they end up as millionaires. It, it's all a scam, and it's part of the reason I absolutely hate unions. Anyway, carry on, Mr. Starmer. Uh, I don't need to see the legal advice, my team has seen it, but I will say this, that on the day that the a &E figures, people waiting more than 24 hours in a &E, we now know that they are 10 times as high as they were five years ago. The idea that the Tories want to be focusing on what Andrew Rayner uh, how much time she spent with her ex-husband ten years ago. I can tell you here, at this hospital, nobody but nobody is interested in that. I mean, yeah, these are all just typical pol political answers. Oh, nobody really cares that Angela Rayner <laughs> managed to evade tax illegally, and, well, no, no, I do. Quite a few other people do. I, I happen not to be in the hospital that day, but okay, if I was in the hospital that day, I would have cared. I mean, yeah, the NHS is a disaster. You're not going to fix it. No one's going to fix it. It's impossible to fix. I, oh, whatever, it's a different issue. Only point I was going to make there is that Labour activists and the Labour Party are trying to pretend that people don't care about this issue when a lot of people do. It, one thing that a lot of people really hate from politicians is hypocrisy. And again, when such a big issue with the Tories is their legal tax avoidance, if the Labour deputy leader and a Labour senior MP has illegally evaded tax, even that small amount of 1,500, then yeah, people care about it, as I do. And I want all of Lord Ashcroft's questions answered, because they're all relevant. But again, and this is part of the reason I hate private eye, so I'm going to go on a tangent about that. Here is a small number crunching skit that they had in one of their recent editions. And, you know, £3,500, capital gains tax Labour deputy leader Angela Rayner is said to owe HMRC, according to a new biography from the Tory donor Lord Ashcroft. Okay. And £112 million tax Lord Ashcroft avoided via his non-dom status between 2000 and 2010. Again, a big difference here, a big glaring difference. One is illegal and the other isn't. Okay, the non-dom status is probably going to end up being illegal under Labour, but the point is it isn't. And again, I'm not shocked that a Lord with an awful lot of money and assets managed to <laughs> dodge a lot of that tax. I mean, again, we'd end up having that £112 million, probably, if our taxes weren't so high. I mean, why do, why do people avoid taxes? Because they're too high. It's the constant thing that I find really funny from Labour. They'll always say, well, the rich should pay more tax, the rich should pay more tax, everyone should pay more tax, we need to redistribute money. And then everyone tries to avoid tax when they can, legally. I know so many Labour voters that, you know, have ICES or put more money into their pensions because they don't want to be taxed as much, and they don't see that as the same thing as what Lord Ashcroft here has done. Or he's the opportunity to have a non-dom status because he lives abroad or whatever, so... Yeah, everyone does things like this. These legal ways to pay less tax are in no way comparable to what Angela Rayner has done and continues to lie about. I mean, this is the thing. Private Eye used to do good investigative work, but they have just completely gone on the side of Tories bad and they are only full of malice. Which is why it's so embarrassing to hear Ian Is Hislop talk these days. When in reality, everyone in politics sucks. And I suppose at least the one thing that... <laughs> private eye tends to do 
is eventually switch over to having a go at the other side when they're actually in power. So I suppose we've got that to look forward to, assuming they actually do it after 14 years of Tory rule. But anyway, this is one of the main defences that people keep putting up. Or oh, what about this legal stuff that Tories do? Yeah, it's, it's a different conversation, that. But as I say, it's a typical thing that Labour activists are saying. I'm sick and tired of this government lying, thieving, cheating us and giving contracts, backhanders and peerages to their mates. Again, as if Labour aren't going to do that. It's so funny to hear them say this. I, I'll, I'd i take a thousand Angela Rayners over them any day. Again, as if Angela Rayner isn't going to try and prop up her union friends. Again, she has made contacts and friends as a union representative. Like, of course she has. If you don't think as Labour deputy leader she's not going to give these people more power, I've got a bridge to sell you. You know, it's politics. Of course people are going to favour people that they know. That's how everything works. And this isn't me playing apology for the Tories. I think they deserve zero seats. I don't think it's necessarily a good idea for them to actually have it. But the reasoning from Labour activists is just so short-sighted. Effectively what it all comes down to is I like unions and want them to have more power. And if that's what you want, then I guess, yeah, welcome to the clown decade where things are going to get worse. And the larger Labour activists are just as lame with their excuses. Nobody gives a solitary fig about Raina making a tax error on a council house before she was an MP. I, again, I, I think that would actually be true. I don't think people would be so harsh if it was just a tax error and she paid it back. The problem is, is that she appears to be lying consistently about what was actually going on at that time. Uh, and the lying about it all is what is raising quite a few questions. But people do give a fig about Tory MPs and peers in multi-million tax avoidance schemes. Corru <laughs> Again, legal. Corruption. Yeah. Sh uh, S in rivers. Again, yeah. Again, under Tony Blair, they were taken to the European court over how bad our rivers are. So it, it, to me, it just looks like things haven't improved since. A broken NHS. Again, you're not going to fix it. And those Tory criminals destroying our country. Um, again, it's really funny when people say, oh, people are smearing Angela Rayner to distract from all this Tory badness going on. And then all they have done for the past 14 years and even do now is say the same tired old bleating stuff. Stuff that isn't necessarily even wrong all the time. It's just very, very tedious to constantly hear and has absolutely no more substance than it did 14 years ago. Is absolutely pointless. Like, this is where politics is at, by the way. You're smearing, no, you're smearing. What about policy that's actually going to help the country? No one seems to care about that. And even the hopeful party of reform appear to just be kowtowing down to the communists that hope not hate. Effectively, I think people are going to move over to the Homeland Party, and I think it's going to get to the point where even I say... Yeah, it may be run by someone from XBMP, but I, ju I just don't care anymore. That is how bad everyone else is, by the way. I, I am having to compromise on one of my rules of I never want to be represented or be under a party by anyone who was involved in Patriotic Alternative or the British National Party because they seem to have a fascist and Nazi problem. But it's getting to a point where I'm seriously considering just ignoring that because of how bad things are getting. We need that much of a complete paradigm shift that I'm willing to go accelerationist in that way. And I don't like that fact, but it's how bad things are getting. And it's getting to a point where, well, what do I have to lose by admitting that? I mean, I'm not going to do it. I have no actual plans to, but it's certainly something I'm thinking about. And it's just like I'm thinking about voting the Tory party next election to keep Labour out. I mean, <laughs> I think that there is genuinely merit to that argument because of how bad Labour are going to be. I don't think I will do it. I think I'll probably vote independent or if they're, they're all just as left-wing as well, just spoil my ballot. But I have to think of so many options at this point because things are just that bad. I have not seen any improvement in the country in the past, what, decade? And yes, I do put that purely all on the Tories because the Tories are left-wing. And if my problem is that the Tories are left-wing, of course a bigger problem is going to be that the Labour Party are even more left-wing. But in reality, God knows what I'm going to do. It's going to be an interesting stream because I am planning to cover the election. And I think it's going to be one of the most depressing streams I ever do. Anyway, I'm going to finish up on the weird new darling of the left, which is Carol Vorderman. Daily Mail's 793rd front page on Angela Rayner with letter from Richard Holden, Tory chair, and stench of Holden's desperation, no constituency for him in general election, an obsession. 
yeah, this is probably due to it being a popular attack on Angela Rayner. Sure, that doesn't mean that the questions didn't have merit as I went through. So here's a few holding facts. Find £100 for dropping litter after having a go at litter louts. Okay, good. I am glad that he got punished for that. That's fine. Signed off an extra £10,000 for Lee Anderson. I don't know what that means. Obsession with Starmer or Rayner. Okay, yes, they... <laughs> They are the two, you know, that's the leader of the opposition. The two leaders of the opposite. Well, Starmer is the leader of the opposition. Rayner is a deputy leader. Of course, he's got an obsession with them. They are his political enemies. His false claims linking Starmer to a COVID Labour quiz event were mocked. The event was online. Okay, fair enough. Like, he made a mistake there. I don't... How is any of this an excuse for Angela Rayner doing something potentially illegal and is now clearly lying about it? Demanded local police reopen beer gates. Everyone cleared. Okay, fine. What's the issue with that? I want this potentially illegal thing reopened and investigated. Okay, they did, and everyone was cleared. I... <laughs> How are these attacks on him? Tory MP said Holden would be willing to stoop as low as he could go. He seems about right. Okay. This isn't an example of him stooping low. I'm sure there are, well, there are other examples of that. Holden 2019, new MP with tiny majority. Okay. Has no constituency for new general election after boundary changes. Okay. Tried to be a candidate for a safe seat but lost his bid. Oh, like, how are these in any way comparable to tax evasion? Like, the only thing he did illegal was drop litter and he got fined for it. Lied to constituents about energy bill payments for his second home. Okay, I don't know how true that is either, but yes, that is also bad. It, it is bad when politicians lie. I do agree, Carol Vorderman. Why are you therefore playing cover for Labour lies? I, <laughs> I know why. It's because you are a partisan. But I suppose this is why I'm kind of happy in the position I'm in. I, I do play a lot of apologia for the Tories, but that's because I think they get an awful lot more vitriol from the left than they really deserve. They are just useless. And quite a few of the MPs lie, but they don't lie any worse than any politician in the past has. And as it shows here, when they do break the law, they actually do seem to get fined. For some reason, with Angela Rayner, yes, okay, it's being investigated, but everyone seems to be trying to play complete cover for her. A typical Tory answer to something like this would be, oh, it's under investigation, I don't particularly want to comment. Uh, what about Labour, what about Labour, what about Labour? But what... <laughs> What Keir Starmer said is, oh, my team's seen the tax advice and it's absolutely fine. And yes, I do believe Angela Rayner when she's been caught out lying. It, it, it's a little bit different. And it's why it has become such a big attack from the right wing. And honestly, I expect this story to just be buried in the next few weeks because things are just only going to ramp up as election time looms. We still don't know when the election will be, but it is probably going to be at some point over the summer. So as I say... We have that to look forward to. And I will be streaming election night on this channel because I've never done one before and I've regretted not doing one before. And I think it will be fun for me and a few of my politically engaged friends to be talking about this. We may even have someone from the inside of UKIP on as if that means anything. Anyway, that is everything I have for you today. Uh, some announcements. Uh, no, not regional variations. Regional variations is tomorrow night though. So catch me on Tail Features channel there. Tonight, though, it is the other side of the hill, and we're doing something a bit different this time. Instead of just going through stories of the week, even though there have been quite a few this week, we are talking about Bible literalism. We are going to be having a discussion with Rubber, John, and Tharium, three of the main people who go on Tosh, to talk about whether we should be taking the Bible literally or not and go into detail on things like that. We will all be coming from different perspectives, so it should be quite a productive and interesting talk. So... Catch us tonight on the Wellington Project, link down below. That will be starting at 9 o'clock tonight. And Laughing at the Guardian is returning next Friday. I should be having special guests on then. I won't announce them yet, just in case things change over the next couple of weeks. But I hope to see you all there. The best way to support me, I think, is to obviously watch these videos, but also catch me on all the live streams I do. It's good to have you all there. It's good to have you all engaged in the chat. It's how you can get more that you'd like to know if my opinions out of me and I mean why are you watching me if you don't care for my opinions it's all I give on this channel but anyway there are all things you have to look forward to obviously regular content will still be put out 
on this channel as well. I'm trying to aim for three videos a week and I seem to be sticking by that quite well. So there you go. Oh, and also I may as well mention, I do have channel membership as well. This is just a great way to support the channel. I have four members at the moment. And so the more members I can get, the better it gets. The only real reward I give you at the moment is that I put your name in the description. And thank you for the support because a bit like old school Sargon days, I don't particularly want to take sponsorships. I, I'm not big enough to anyway. I don't particularly want to hide a lot of my work behind paywalls. I simply want to do this as a hobby. And if you know you people think that it is worthy of just giving me a donation, even if it's just two quid a month or something like that, that means an awful lot to me. You don't have to do that, but a lot of people might not realize that actually channel membership does go a long way and the option is there for you. But as I say, it's just an option. And since I'm in the middle of shilling, I may as well add that in as well. Anyway, that is everything I had for you today. So once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, goodbye.